We're going to go ahead and start. So if you'll just get your food and take a seat. I hope everyone's having an amazing morning. I'm Shelly Cross with the Greenville Chamber of Commerce, and I'd like to welcome you today. And thank you for attending the GISD State of the District. Before we begin, I would like to recognize some people in the room quickly. Please stand when I call your name so that you can be recognized. Uh, we always recognize our chamber board members. We have Miranda Spencer with American National Bank, Beth Natomo with Atmos Energy, Holly Gray with Century 21 First Group, David Wild with Century 21 Patterson Agency. Sharon Booth with Greenville ISD. Amy Wade with Greenville ISD. Craig Driggers with L3 Harris. Chasing Carpenter with Gladsons.com. Mandy Stewart with the Hometown Group All City Real Estate. And Trina Colmeyer with Senior Center Resources and Public Transit. Our Chamber Ambassadors that are here today Kevin Williams with GEUS. Chasing Carpenter with Gladsons.com. Trina Coldire with Senior Center Resources and Public Transit, Beth Tumbo with Atmos Energy, Liz Patterson with Prestige Integra, David Wyland with Century 21 Patterson Agency, Rose Hayden with Hunt Regional Healthcare, Julie Spear with L3 Harris. Our business investors that are in the room today that we're very grateful for, Platinum Investor L3 Harris, Gold Investor Alliance Bank, Silver Investors, American National Bank, Money Law Firm, I think Money Law and Title is a, what I should say, GEUS, Hunt Regional Healthcare, Atlas Energy, and our Bronze Investors, Lone Star Credit Union, and Wildcatters. With the City of Greenville, we have Councilman Tim Cruz, and with our Greenville Board of Development, we have Holly Gray. We do have um, the GISD school board, which I normally um, introduce, but we're going to let GISD do that today. And before I hand it over to GISD, we are going to hear from a few of our sponsors that help make this breakfast possible today. Our table sponsor is Brent Money. Are we doing Brent? Oh, right there. Okay, with um, Money, Wall, and Title. Good morning. I'm going to make this uh, real short and sweet. I want to thank um, Heath Jarvis for offering me my old job back here. Um, I, I used to teach science here before I went to law school. And um, I don't think he really wants me back, um, but it was very nice for him to offer. Um, um, I'm here at the Money Law and Title. We're a uh, law firm and title company here in town. Um, we just won for the second year in a row the Girl Banner Reader's Choice Award for Best Law Firm and Best Title Company. So thank you all for voting if you did or, or not. But um, uh, we specialize in real estate, probate, um, and business law. And then we close a lot of real estate transactions um, in Hunt County, Hopkins County, Rains County, Collin County, um, and Grayson County in the Sherman. So we're growing, it's fun, um, and uh, that's it. Thank you, Brent. Our advertising sponsor is Kate Hoffer with Lone Star Credit Union. Okay, good morning. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Kate Hoffer. I'm here with Lone Star Credit Union. So I just want to talk for a couple minutes about uh, the financial talk and what we're hearing in the news. So if you are uh, paying attention at all or even casually glancing at the news or the internet, you're probably hearing a looming talk of recession. No matter how much you think it may or may not happen, it's definitely still on everyone's mind. And so I want to talk a little bit about financial stress and how that can impact employees. So financial stress isn't limited to just watching the news at home or viewing your Facebook feed. It tends to bleed into all aspects of our lives and that really includes work. So some symptoms of financial stress can include things like a short temper, being withdrawn, absenteeism, being distracted at work, and a decline in work quality. Uh, your formerly productive and happy employees are more distracted, more distracted, and that financial stress really can be to blame. 
And in fact, employee stress costs $300 billion, with a B, annually. And 40% of workers say that they would be less stressed if they weren't worried about finances at home. So how do we address this? Um, you can address this with loans for credit union. <laughs> there we go, we circled back. Um, so a couple of ways we can help you guys out with that. We do have our Good to Go at Work program where we can offer your employees assistance through financial counseling. And that includes things like setting a budget, getting out of debt, and saving for the future. Uh, we also offer Lone Star investment solutions. And for anybody who is sitting here and thinking, well, I don't know anything about investing, or investing really isn't for me, or I don't have enough money to invest, if you're sitting in this room and you plan to retire one day, investing is for you. If you are here and you would like to set up a college fund for your kids or your grandkids, investing is for you. Um, if you have an old 401k or an old 403b floating around, investing is for you. And so those are the types of things that we can help you out with um, at Lone Star Credit Union. Uh, we can put you in touch with our uh, financial advisor, Tim. So um, as a credit union member, you would have access to things like our great rates. Um, you can save money on auto loans, and you can also earn money through dividends. Um, having a financial partner who will provide personalized service so that you can not only survive life's ups and downs and whatever the economy throws at us, uh, but also thrive in it. And if you have any questions about what we offer or what we can do for you or for your employees, we have a booth right by the door and we'd be happy to talk to you about it. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. And next, our presenting sponsor is Miranda Spencer with American National Bank. Good morning. It's always great to follow Lone Star or Alliance. I really don't mind at all. They are wonderful partners in the community, just like we strive to be. So for those of you who do not know me, I'm Marina Spencer. I'm a retail market manager with American National Bank for Hunt County and City Locations. Uh, so just a little bit about us. We've been around since 1875. We were one of the oldest um, independently owned banks in Texas. And for over 10 years, we have been recognized as one of the top 10 places to work in the DFW market, which I can contest. I've been here almost 16 years, so it is a great place to be. Uh, we have 30 locations, or just over, in the DFW area. Um, recently opened our new Burleson location. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you ever want to take a two-hour drive, you can check it out. It's great. Um, we are a full-service bank, so like um, both Alliance and Lone Star, we offer very similar products, um, consumer, commercial, lending, uh, investments, wealth management, anything you can imagine, treasury services for your business. We take care of all of those needs. We are currently, for the school teachers, offering a $500 closing credit on your mortgage. So if that's something you're interested in, come by and see us. I do want to take just a moment to circle back around to the school district. Um, in, in honor of what we are here for today and how GISD has impacted American National Bank and how we have impacted GISD. So I sent out an email to all of our staff just to find out who has graduated from GISD and if you haven't graduated and you're an employee of our bank, tell me about your kids if they went to our school district. So a lot of you know Denise Taylor. She is class of 1981. She's our director of retail. She's been with American National for 19 years. Her son, Blake Taylor, is class of 2011, works for the competition, but we don't hold that against him for some reason. There was something a little off, it's probably from Billy. Uh, Faith Swanson Smith works for me here at our Greenville location. She's class of 2020, just starting out in her career as a financial associate. Um, my daughter, Avery Spencer, is class of 2020. She is a senior at UNT. She'll graduate in May from the College of Visual Arts and Design. My son Grant will also be a college, uh, sorry, high school graduate of GISD, class of 2024. Uh, Sean Franklin, our banking center president, has two that have already graduated. His daughter, Ridley Henson, was class of 2014. She's now a teacher at Roy Roy City ISD. His son, Peyton Franklin, is class of 2019. He graduates in December from Dallas Baptist University pre-med, and I'm sure you all have seen Sean post soccer, soccer, soccer. He is fabulous. <laughs> No. Jace Franklin is his son. He will graduate with my son is a class of 2024 graduate. And Margaret Benton, who's our financial specialist at our Greenville location. Our son Nathan Benton is class of 2011, an electrical assembler with L3 Harris. So as you can see, 
The partnership between the district and all of its local community is amazing, and A&B is glad to be a part of that. We love to give back to this. We are part of the Greenville Education Enrichment Foundation. We give to the Lion Pride Band, Athletic Booster, Sponsors, anything Amy Way asked for, Amy gets. So, <laughs> but we're glad to partner with that because we understand that relationship. So we're glad to be a part of the community. We want to thank you for the opportunity to be up here today, to be able to present. And if you have anything that you need, come by and see us at one of our Greenville locations. Thank you. Thank you. And then today, our last um, sponsor, which is our main core sponsor, is Elbury Harris. So we have Craig Driggers. So welcome everybody. Uh, really exciting time. We've got, a, we've got another opportunity to speak with you in a few minutes. But first, I just wanted to say thank you all for showing up. Uh, it's good to be in Greenville. Uh, part of the part of the presentation I'm going to give in a few minutes, I'm going to explain why. It's so good to be part of GIS State, right? Uh, a lot of good things going on with L3. A lot of growth. Uh, recently won a about $300 million program. Uh, you're saying, well, what does that mean to Greenville, right? So. You're going to hear that the, the actually the airplanes are going to be in Tulsa, uh, but the work, the manufacturing is going to be done right here in Greenville, Texas. A few months ago, we all heard from Luke Savoy who talked about uh, Greenville manufacturing being the hub. Uh, we're hiring, we're growing. That's going to be part of what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit. But I appreciate the opportunity today and, and look forward to it. Thank you. The chamber cannot exist without support from businesses like these, so please give a hand to all our sponsors today. The Greenville Chamber of Commerce is a proud promoter for Greenville ISD. As a GISD graduate myself, 1983, that tells you how old I am, with children who have already graduated, including I have a son that is a junior here um, at the high school, and he will graduate in 2024 with Miranda's son. So I'm personally delighted to introduce my school district that I'm so proud of and who continues to have the small town feel with big city opportunities. Good morning. My name is Annika Escobar and I'm a Greenville High School senior. Welcome to the Greenville ISD State of the District. Thanks for being here today. Greenville community members and Chamber of Commerce members make a huge difference for us by supporting our schools and encouraging us to do our best. You'll get to see what's happening in our schools and we hope you've enjoyed the best breakfast in town prepared by our culinary arts students. Now, please join early college senior Isabella Freeman, who will deliver our invocation. So I'm not a senior, I am a junior, but good morning. Um, I am a part of the early college high school program. Early college is a program that gets you a step ahead of everybody else in life. We do graduate with our associate's degree in engineering along with our high school diploma. And I plan to take that with me to the University of Texas to pursue my dream of being an OBGYN. And now I would like to lead everyone in invocation. Would you please bow your heads and close your eyes? I would like to say a few blessings, first over the food and our culinary team that made it, next over the community members and our board that is here today. We are thankful for the many blessings that they provide us with every day. Last, I would like to say a blessing over our teachers and staff members Without you, none of this would be possible. Amen. Now, please rise as our Navy Junior ROTC presents the colors and the GHS Encore Choir sings the national anthem.
I'm Neil celebrating my sixth year, and I, it is such a joy and a pleasure and to be able to tell you that I'm the superintendent of Greenville ISD. Uh, it is a job that uh, is so rewarding and yet challenging, but to see what we're doing for students' lives is, is what we do, is why we teach, is why we're here in Greenville ISD. As Annika said, I did begin my career in elementary. Uh, first grade, second grade, third grade. I did loop up with those kids, so I had them throughout the three years. And then um, to the leap to middle school, why algebra, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that was a great experience, but then I went quickly into high school and was the dean of the high school, a 5A high school. Uh, I couldn't ask for seven better bosses, so thank you for that. Uh, first, let, if, when I say your name, if you'll stand up, President Melita Cruz. <laughs> Vice President Roger Livingston. <laughs> Secretary Trish Woodruff. So, Greenville, Greenville ISD. Why do we want to be a part of Greenville ISD? So that's the question. So when you think about why a family moves, why people come here, it's for growth and opportunity. So just a little bit about growth in the last few years. Last year alone, 484 new homes were built in Greenville. This year, there's 35 more homes platted for Greenville, Texas. So Heath Jarvis. Population hadn't changed in Greenville on those signs in over 20 years. And now we're all about the growth that's coming. So what was done to ensure the success for the growth that's coming to Greenville, right? You had people with vision, you had people with a plan, and they knew in advance to put infrastructure in to support this growth that's coming. All right? So Mike Rackman, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. So Mike and I go back a long ways. He was uh, part of the L3 family years ago in engineering. 
So Mike, when we talk about infrastructure, okay? Can you can you give me an answer? Yeah. Right? Group. 
that from the high school is uh, something special, you know, being someone that the kids can look up to, the future. Um, also want to uh, thank Greenville High School for preparing us in this for all the courses that they make available for us. Uh, welding, solar power, robotics, everything just prepared us for this moment. And uh, as far as making a living, we're also learning great skills and it's uh, stepping stone to greater things. As far as being a great asset to this company, being a greater citizen to this beautiful city. Okay, so I need to have one close with this. So when this, when this photo hit the Herald Banner, so there's 10, 10 school districts in Hunt County, right? All 10 have called and says we want in. So, so from Wolf City all the way to Quinlan. So the partnership is starting in, in Northeast Texas. And so Greenville, you are setting in the hub to make this happen, to bring these opportunities for those 626,000 jobs that's going to be needed. Let's prepare our students for these opportunities. Thank you. Sorry about that. So we have some more talents, and I do want to say, I asked Miranda, I said, so is as good as you thought it would be. She said, it far exceeds my expectations. So we're really, really, really proud of our students. So. And there was, Craig, there was 40 that interviewed. Craig, there was 40 that interviewed. Is that about right? Yes, yeah, so very, very, very fortunate. Thank you for doing that for us. So we do have some more student success stories to share. But first, if you didn't know, it's election time. So I want to take, let you know about the up upcoming bond. And you're in the CTE building facility that the 2014 bond supported. This has greatly expanded our offerings. We now have over 70 career technology courses out of this area alone, along with our early college that um, Miranda was talking about. So we have, just to mention a few, we already have cosmetology, culinary arts, robotics, graphic designs are all in part of this building. If you uh, have an opportunity when we get through, I'm sure they would be happy to show you this state-of-the-art uh, culinary uh, facility to, uh, to my right or left. Our early college high school, which allows students to graduate with an associate's degree in engineering. And next year, uh, we are looking into expanding to health and uh, EMT services in our early college facility, partnering with PJC. So the 2022 bond has two buildings in it, Greenville Middle School and LP Waters. Both these buildings are 72 years old, and they are identified as the highest priority with the community. When the Community Advisory Committee met for six months, they picked number one and number one was middle school in LP Waters. They wanted to look at accommodate enrollment growth, expand course offerings, and I'll tell you what that means in a second, and update our facilities. Our principals, our, they were engineers, they were architects, our teachers, uh, administrators all looked at a score sheet on our building and the building scored, LP Water scored a 66 and middle school scored a 64 and transportation scored a 49. The, in education we know that 70 and below is not, well, not a good score that we want to make. So those two buildings continue to be top priority for improving Greenville ISD. Transportation, um, the board did allow us to take some funds out of fund balance, and our bus drivers were taking care of buses out in the elements, rain, snow, ice, and washing the buses with a water hose. So phase one has two mechanic bays, <coughs> excuse me, and one wash bay, 
and that should we should have our women cutting uh, end of this month. We're doing our final walkthrough this week, right? So we should see that grand opening, right? Ribbon cutting soon. So uh, one thing that we heard is that we wanted to make sure that we had citizen involvement in the decision-making process. And for this much money, what is the facilities going to look like? So we held six meetings with the community. The first one was with high school students, middle school teachers, and they designed a concept of what the building should look like, how it should be laid out, how the traffic pattern should be. And I guess, believe it or not, the student's rendering was the one that won and has made it through to the design process. And then we met with uh, LP Waters teachers, and then we had four community meetings after that that literally planned out what the, what the building should look like. I've already talked about the middle school, 72 years old, and um, the rooms are small, the kids are big, and it is crowded, and um, it doesn't meet all ADA requirements. We were grandfathered into that, and we're definitely over student capacity. If the bond is to pass, was to pass, going to pass, whatever, but if the bond passes, uh, we would make this building administration, special ed, maintenance and operations in our alternative school. So that's who would be housed in this building if the bond were to pass. We currently own the property next to the hospital. We bought that property in 2008. And so it is, uh, there is a development that is working with the city to see if they can get single member houses there. If they can, then they are talking to us about a memorandum of understanding to put a road between their property and our middle school. If that doesn't come through, Shelby to Nevada and Ridgecrest to Nevada are the roads that would be into the middle school. Here's a rooftop rendering. You see there is plenty of stacking for cars and for buses. With this facility, we would move sixth grade from Travis up to middle school. So sixth, seventh, and eighth would be at this building. That would allow us to have 400 additional students elementary at Travis. So that's how we uh, take the growth of elementary students. It would be at Travis. At this, when I said expanded offerings, the CTE facility, we are able to put CTE classes at middle school, but we have no rooms right now. So if this were to pass, we would be able to take floral, welding, uh, like animal grooming, welding, and AVID would expand into middle school, allowing our juniors and seniors to have more practical classes because they would be taking their early classes at middle school. There's a front rendering, two-story. And then LP Waters, again, is 72 years old. Um, it was Carver High School, and then now LP Waters. It uh, meets none of the, uh, now, none of the TEA, Texas Education Agency's requirements now. We did look at cost of repairing it, and it was uh, over 24 million. So we did look at that, and we don't have that money in our fund balance. So um, the site, you know, there's a lot of, that's a major road they're on. Uh, the last few years, we've had a couple of uh, people hit on that road. Three and four year olds coming across with their parents is quite a challenge. Here's some pictures, just so you, if you haven't been there for a while. The cafeteria is small. The kitchen is that narrow on the bottom right. The second picture on the bottom left is the scaffolding underneath the floor. It's a four foot scaffold and it's rusting. It's, it's old, it's rusted over time. So it's fine right now, but it's rusting. There's a the traffic that we talked about. LP Waters has enough property behind it to be able to build the new facility behind the current one. It would have 500 students in it three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and special ed. It would be a single building, 
single story building and it would be ready in 2024 if the bond were to pass. The middle school would be ready in 2025 if the bond were to pass. There's a rendering, three-year-old hall, four-year-old hall, and then special ed. At both locations, a gym would be a storm shelter, which is required now for any new buildings for ISDs. So uh, both of the gyms at both locations would be a storm shelter for all students, all teachers, and any visitors who are in the building at the time that the uh, warning was called. There's a rending in the front. And I'm going to take you through <laughs> Make sure that we remember that and make sure we honor that history. So inside the glass, you walk, well don't walk through the glass, but if you came in the building and came in this area, uh, this is a, mem a memorabilia wall or area. The wood around this wall is the wood off the current stage. The brick is off the current building. The blue area is purple, but it looks blue. It will be purple because that's what your color is, purple and gold. Uh, will be any trophies that we have, and we have community members that uh, say they will donate to our memory wall. The top middle would be a video stream. Graduates from Harbor High School are going to come through LP Waters and say, this is where we had biology, this is where we had lunch, and really talk about their memories. So that'll be a video stream. Underneath it is like at a museum where you have paper documents that you can scan through and read. So that will be documents from the past. The Carver emblem is on the left. On the left bottom are plaques that will have the name and year that Carver High School graduates graduated. And Carver High School is off the side of the building at LP Waters right now. That will come off the building and be put in here. The bench to the left is one of the benches from the gym. And then the mural at the back, of course, is a mural of the picture. And the football player there is off of a yearbook that someone has given us to put in here. Behind it, we are required for Head Start to have a family community room. So behind it would be the family community room. And then it can open up the media library as well. So it could be a pretty large area there. So just to summarize, uh, the new middle school is budgeted at 105.1. LP Waters is budgeted at 31.4. Travis would not uh, have any impact on the bond because Travis is an existing building. But again, if we move sixth grade up to middle school, then we would have uh, 400 student capacity at Travis and 18 rooms. And then uh, the total amount of the bond is 136.5. Just a reminder, our board uh, did pass, again, one of the lowest tax rates in 10 years of 1.03 in August. And if the bond were to pass, the impact is three cents on 100. And here's just a graph to show that even if the bond were to pass, we would still be one of the lowest tax, well, we would be the lowest tax for any of the communities around us. Every ISD around us, it's listed on the bottom here, has passed their bond. And this is just a visual to show you that we're right in the middle. That bond, of course, has not passed, but the other uh, districts have passed bonds in varying amounts. The presentation is on our website if you wanted it, but just 
just so you can see it now. Again, it would be a three cents impact if the bond were to pass. On our website, we also have a calculator under November 2020 bond. And if you are homestead exempt, you could put in uh, your house value and the exemption. It would show the tax impact if this bond were to pass. If you're not homestead exempt, then you could just put the value in and uh, see what your tax impact would be. But that calculator is on our website. Here's just, uh, if you are homestead exempt, of course the uh, May election allowed homestead to go from 25 to 40. So a, a home value of 200,000 with an exemption of 40,000, then the taxable value would be 160,000. $4 monthly increase approximately with a projected annual increase of $48 for that, for that one house example. If you are 65 or older and have filed that uh, exemption or if you are uh, filed disability, there would be zero impact if this bond were to pass on your taxes. That's it. So thank you for listening to that presentation. So we all know the importance of dreams, and we have several more students here today who will be sharing their dreams and success stories with you. We will start with MC, Annika Escobar. Annika comes to tell us more about her dreams. Hello, so as I said before, my name is Annika Escobar, and I'm a senior. Uh, I'm co-captain of the RMI Square Car team. Uh, that car, that's not that, that car. And uh, I'm also in band, I play the flute. I'm also vice president of it. And I do pals and all that community stuff. So anyways, so today I'm here to share about what my dreams have been growing up. So I went to Carver Elementary, so I was a bilingual Carver cool cat. And honestly, now I want to be an electrical engineer, but when you're a kid, you really don't like dream of being an engineer. I mean, you don't even like know what that is. And to be honest, I didn't know what it was until like freshman year, and I realized, oh, okay, I think this is for me. So, anyways, my dream though, all throughout my life, has been to be the first. And what that means is that I want to be the first generation of my family to move on and have a career. Uh, currently, I have a welding certification that I obtained my sophomore year through our CTE program in Onboarding. And um, I'm the first female in my family to have a loading certification. So there goes one. Uh, currently, I've applied to three schools for electrical engineering, and I've been accepted to one. First in my family to be accepted. I got accepted into Embry Riddle Paranormal University this past weekend, literally. So, yeah. Once again, the first in my family to do that. And it just feels really amazing to have so many opportunities within our district. Um, I would not choose, I would have chosen my path for engineering if it wasn't for all of the career and technical education that I've gained through our district these past four years. So, also, my parents, they're also the first in the family to move on. My dad actually moved to this country. He did not finish middle school. He moved to this country at 16. He was the first in his family to move on and take risk and literally just risk everything and move on and start a new life. And my mom did too. She moved here very young with absolutely nothing except, you know, just knowledge, I guess. And she, we made it through, I guess. So now I, my dream is to move on and keep representing the Hispanic community in, within our district. Because I know within our district there are so many people whose dream is also to be a first generation student. And I want to thank Greenville Independent School District for the continued support and you know, for funding all of our career and technical education because without it, so many programs would not exist. You know, we wouldn't have robotics, we wouldn't have wood car, cosmetology, etc. So, yeah, that's about it. Just thank you so much for the continuous support and, yeah, on to our superintendent this year.
Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Bowie fourth grader, Avery Harris, and Lamar fifth grader, Jackson Vega, who were in the summer production of Mary Poppins. At the Greenville Municipal Auditorium, they will perform a song from that show. Today we are going to be singing a song in the show called Mary Poppins. It's called The Perfect Man. And in this song, Jane and Michael Banks are talking to their parents about what they want in the perfect man. If you want this choice position, have a cheery disposition. Rosy cheeks, no warts. That's the part I put to. Play games, all sorts. You must be kind, you must be witty. Very sweet and fairly pretty. Take us on outings, give us treats. Sing songs, bring sweets. Never be cross or cruel, never feed us. Castor oil or gruel, ugh. Love us as a son and daughter. The smell of barley water. I put that bit in too. If you won't scold and dominate us, we will never give you cause to hate us. We won't hide your spectacles so you can't see. Put toads in your bed or pepper in your tea. Hurry, nanny. Many thanks, sincerely. Jane. in show business. I just saw it one day and I just loved how it looked and all the dancing and acting and singing. I have always loved singing as like a toddler and it's just always felt like me and so I decided that I wanted to do it. So, so is it something you're going to do the rest of your life with me?
pedicure, facials, and other services. I remember telling Ms. Rogers if she had any hair color appointments, I would gladly take them. I wanted to get as much practice as I could. As I started taking hair color appointments, I would post on my Instagram. Alicia reached out to me and asked me if I wanted, if I was interested in working for her when I had my license. Which let me tell you, it was one of the hardest things I have ever done. I took the written test four times. Honestly, I'm thankful for the support of my loved ones because if it wasn't for them, I would have gave up. Because mythology taught me nothing but four things. Nothing is easy. Nothing is easy if you really want something. You have to give your all until you achieve it. When I finally passed the test, I started crying and I felt so many emotions. A couple of weeks later, I took my practical, which was extremely easy. When I got my results and they said I passed, I realized everything was worth it. I am proud to say I am now working with Alicia Swanson as an assistant. I am learning even more about hair techniques and the most exciting experience I'm getting is using the new cheek color machine that allows us to mix our own, our own colors every day. Now I look back and everything was worth it. Thank you, Alicia, for giving me an opportunity to be one of your assistants. And thank you, GISD, for bringing the cosmetology program to us. I want to say thank you to Gringo ISD. Without these opportunities, my dream wouldn't be able to be true. Um, I dreamed of not being able to struggle like I had to going through high school. I struggled a lot, and if I would have had the opportunity to go to cosmetology school while I was in high school, the opportunity would have saved me a lot of struggle. And when I found out that they had these opportunities, I was immediately like, I have the ability to teach them what I do get. So I didn't have to come out of school and struggle. So now Ms. Rogers sets these girls up for success. If I have the ability to pick any ISD to hire from, it's Rainbow ISD. She literally sets them up to be able to take clients immediately. And so she actually is taking clients now. So we're really excited about that. Um, with these, without these programs, like they literally give these girls, these students, the ability to dream, to dream at a young age, to dream like, I had dyslexia, some of those opportunities were not there for me, and they have the ability to graduate and immediately start working, and if they wanna go back to college, they can work and go to college. That's phenomenal, phenomenal. 70, 70 certifications, that is out of this world. Out of this world. So um, today, Miss Gabby is going to give away two free hair services. So um, we're going to pull through those cards that y'all gave out, and um, I'm just going to give out a business card. Y'all contact us. We'll do a consultation, set y'all up an appointment, everything. Men, we only service women. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but y'all got a woman, a wife, a daughter. A, you got someone that needs to get their hair done. You can give away this service. We are very, very busy. Juice from Cam it's Cammy Williams. Kids are amazing, our teachers are amazing, our community partners far exceed any other district that I've ever heard of. So for that, I am, I am blessed and thankful beyond all words, and from the board and from myself and from our school district. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Shelly, thank you for hosting this today. We appreciate the Chamber very, very much. My name is Elizabeth, and 
and I want to be an engineer. Hi, my name is Ichio Escobar, and when I grow up, I would like to be a veterinarian. Hi, my name is Joshua Nelson, and I want to pursue a career in pharmacy. Hi, I'm Chloe. When I grow up, I want to be a cosmetologist. Hi, my name is Brad Dawson, and I want to be a firefighter when I grow up. My name is Mari Wilcock, and when I grow up, I would like to be an engineer. I am Nathan Gowden, and I want to be a sports commentator. I'm Paige and I want to be a I'm and I want to be a motor driver. My name is Rob and I'm a When I grow up, I want to be a police officer. Hello, my name is Rocky, and I'll be a promoter when I grow up. Hi, my name is Ivan Velasquez, and my dream job is being a criminal mysterious. Hello, my name is Evan Day, and when I grow up, I will be an acting senior. Hi, my name is Shania Sanders, and I would like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Allison Nabara, and I'm when I grow up. I'm Jackson Park. When I grow up, I want to be a race car driver. My name is Kingston, and I want to be a professional golfer after college. Teachers make it happen. We need to teach that. We got this. It does amaze me everything that GISD offers. I'm super proud of everything that they do. And just back by the way, when I said I graduated from 1983 and graduated from the new high school, it was the first year that it was built in 1982-83. So that new high school is no longer new. Anyways, our board of directors has chosen to support the upcoming November bond election. Early voting is now until November 4th, and then the last day to vote is November 8th. So please join us in voting yes at the polls this year. Um, we deserve it. The children deserve it. The teachers deserve it. Our community deserves new schools. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for coming. This video has been brought to you by Juice34. Juice is your community-owned provider for electric, internet, cable TV, and true local programming.